why does the divine masculine think that he is a sex god? So that's the live for today. We're going to uh, be looking at uh, their narcissistic porn star prostitute sort of behavior and why they do that for. There's many different reasons and we'll get into that now. First of all, we know that um, they represent um, the, you know, and they see the world from the lower chakras. We know it's from, you know, a space of protection and sexuality and sensuality. And that's how they see the world anyway. So most of humanity is stuck in Maya, which is the 3D in the ego world. So they are at that space where they are already just operating from the lower chakras. To get to your heart space and above for humanity, it's a big thing like to be able to get there. Obviously, because you've manifested each other, there, there was the opening of the heart, but it closes down. So um, basically, they're already operating from that mind frame. That's how they're very different. That's why they don't understand sort of spiritual concepts. They're very logical. They're very sexual. It's all about sex, food, and, you know, survival. There are very few masculines that are a little bit more evolved or developed, but most of them are just based upon that lower chakra sort of business. So that's the first. They represent the lower chakras. The second thing is that they are your divine blueprint, okay? So they know how to please you, but you also know how to please them. You both know how to please each other. And so whenever you do sleep with each other, you will have that same connection. So the first point was um, the fact that that's how their world operates, even before they met you. They're in the ego, they're in the sex, okay? They're in the lower chakras. But the second thing is when you do meet, you have that blueprint, so you know how to please each other. The third, when they meet you, or they speak to you or see you, because I know not all of you have met your twin flame in physical, they see you as the sexiest thing in the world. You're like, like the most addictive drug to them. And they're like wild dogs around you. And if you do have sex with your twin flame, which some of you have, not all of you, um, for the divine feminine, it's a very spiritual experience. Ah, the body is very astral. It's very loving. It's very divine. And that's why we end up associating it to do with like love and romance. But for the divine masculine, having sex with the divine feminine, they feel like a sex god. They are already operating from the lower chakras. They already have the divine blueprint and they know how to like, you know, make love to you and you, they get pleased do pleasing you basically but you're pleasing them too but they're more so pleasing you okay and for them they are very physically anchored so when they have sex with you their experience is of a sex god that they're the most sexual being man pro-esque masculine energy out there now obviously it's not man or woman it's the energy okay but whereas for the divine feminine it's very spiritual godly higher realm experience and we associate it with that but when they've had sex with us they get, um, it's called like cock of the walk, okay? So they walk around as though they are like God's gift to humanity and they feel really sexual and they flaunt it about. They have sex with you and they're just like a, like a kid in a sweetie shop just running around. They're so smiling. They think they're sexy, amazing, wonderful. And they feel like their penis or whatever, their sexual organs, you know, that's what it's all about. Whereas for us, after sex, it's very romantic and spiritual and godly and earthly and we see god and we see the divine and it's like a different experience completely you completely see it differently so i put a post yesterday about uh, about the tantric battery effect so twin flames are naturally uh, rehearsed in tantra without having to practice it without having to learn it so with uh, twin flames the chosen of the same chakra system so with tantric sex what's happening is with breath work with connection with romance which is already there with twin flames the chakras are creating like a circuit board so it goes from the lower chakras up from the you know divine masculine up into the divine feminine and then down and it's like a circular sort of motion going in clockwise so the energy is continually being recycled between you rather than being dispersed or emptied out with regular sexual experiences with non-tantric partners or non-twin flames the energy is dispersed and it's almost like use using the person or abusing the person whereas with tantric sex it is like this battery effect of process of the energy just flowing between you two, which is very intense, okay? The energy is very cataclysmic. It's very bright. It's huge packets of light. So number six is there's huge packets of light. So if any of you have had sex with your twin flame, you will know it's like a heros gamos, uh, it's called. It's the divine union of the souls. So you have huge packets of light come in and that's when you're healed, you're baptized and you bring photonic light to um, earth basically. And I've talked about this before. But as this light enters you, it 
compels you. It forces you to get rid of all darkness within you, okay? So that's afterwards, you start going through your dark nights of souls. Both of you do. You start going through your ego depths. For the, for the Divine Feminine, it's usually very, like, spiritual, internal, emotional. He left me, he abandoned me, he rejected me. But for the, for the Divine Masculine, he feels fear and uh, afraid as well of rejection. So he cocks his walk, his, uh, you know, sex god uh, persona he's gained now. Oh, I am amazing. And goes out doing stuff with other people. Because the darkness that's within them, from their um, ancestral lineage, from their own karma, from your joint consciousness, from humanity's templates, because you are burning humanity's templates, distorted templates, right? They all have to come out. So your divine masculine is compelled to get rid of all the lower chakra crap and distortions, the shame, the blame, the distorted sex. They call all these um, experiences into their life um, and lessons to be able to burn their fingers. They learn it through the 3D, okay? So they're running away, away from you, they're blinded. It's almost like a bucking bronco, which is that, um, do, uh, is, it, is it a donkey or not a donkey? It's a horse, sorry, it's a horse, isn't it? And it's the game where basically the horse is, you put something on the horse's back and it kicks its legs up and it's trying to get rid of it. So the divine masculine is trying to get rid of all the darkness within them. They don't know what's going on. And uh, for the divine feminine, it is um, similar, but done in a different way. So I describe it as almost like shedding the snake skin, shedding the, the layers of distortion. So the Divine Masculine is basically getting rid of all the stuff. They're compel um, compelled to get rid of all the darkness. And that's why they go ahead and do all their crazy stuff, okay? Um, they know that they're at mercy of you. They know that they gain that experience during the sexual experience counter with you because of you. But um, they don't want you to know that. They have too much pride, too much ego, and they're afraid. They're afraid of all the distorted feminines who have tried to control them. So they run, Okay. And they think that they can experience that with someone else or other karmics or the whole of the world or whatever they're doing. But they cannot sustain that Kundalini energy by themselves. It's gone wild. So they don't know what to do with it. They, like the, the, the theory I gave last week, was it, where the little boy sets um, the matchsticks alight and the whole barn goes on fire and then he runs because he doesn't know what to do with the power that he's gained. So the power that the Divine Masculine feels they're ill-equipped to be able to handle it and deal it. So they, uh, they almost, they burn themselves, okay? They um, destroy themselves and get burnt, basically. They don't listen. And uh, number nine is they try, but they cannot experience the same thing with anyone else. Even if it's a tantric practitioner, high-level tantric pra practitioner, they won't get the same rush. It's impossible because it's only with their twin flame that they will feel the same experience so some of you are like oh my god he's with a karmic or he's never going to come back no he won't feel the same with anyone else okay so after they've been sexual with you i, I will talk about whether they're not being sexual because i know a majority i think have not met their twin flame or ne never had sexual intimacy with a twin flame i believe that's the case but you can write in the comments um if you write any questions please write about this topic okay so number 10 after they've had sex with you they go out like a parading peacock they're cocking the walk, yeah? They're feeling so amazing, like a sex god. They feel fantastic. But they don't want to put that on you. They don't want to put uh, be at mercy to you. They think they can do it with other people. So their battery is charged. That tantric battery, that kundalini is charged. They're very energized. They have to dispel all that energy from their system. So they go out and do all their crazy shit um, and burn themselves. Burn themselves. And they realize then that they cannot sustain it and it cannot they cannot feel the same with anyone else also the divine masculine is very rehearsed in tantra like you are but they're more so the right hand tantra but they're doing it unconsciously sorry they're the left hand you're the right hand so the right hand would be to do with doing the inner work by yourself and um, you know abstaining from loads of different things whereas left hand tantra is about just experiencing all the lavishes of life the sex the the meat the alcohol and just consuming it all. And I'm going to do it. I've got a video coming out about this. It is a fast track because uh, it's dangerous. Okay. And the divine masculine does this unconsciously because they're just like doing all the things and they're getting burnt and aligned. But with it, with a tantric practitioner who is rehearsed um, consciously with left hand, they do it consciously. And they're actually trying to um, experience the material lavish lifestyle things to be able to integrate it and alchemize it to its highest form. Number 12 is Heros Gamos, the union of the souls. This plagues them when you have sex with them and your souls unite. It plagues them with their insecurities, with their worthiness. 
um, and they feel like they can get it elsewhere. They feel like someone like you who's easier, they'll practice with them. So they go ahead and carry on doing their madness, okay, until God whoops their ass. Um, number 13 is when they do have this sexual experience with you when they're, um, poor, they're, when they're having heros gamos, right? You open a wide portal. So those of you who had sex with your twin flame will know this. Um, it opens a wide portal and that just basically uh, allows any sort of like darkness has to come out of it eventually. But because of all that portal has been opened because the energy is so huge, it unleashes all this stuff within them and it all has to just come out. All the junk and the crap has to come out. Now the sex with twin flames, it baptizes you, okay? Uh, both of you. Um, it clears away all karma and trauma, blame, shame, guilt. It washes away your sins. It cleanly washes you and removes you from all the sins. And what they've done to you, all the crap they've done to you, um, all the guilt and the shame, when you sleep with them again in reunions, they will be washed clean. And you will forgive too. I know sometimes it's like, why should I you know, um, sleep with them if it's going to get rid of their, um, their stuff they've done? But it also helps you to um, shed uh, all the pain as well, actually. So it's good for you too. Um, number 15, the divine masculine has to learn how not to be scared of this, this energy, and not to run away from the Divine Feminine. Um, they try to make the experience not about the Divine Feminine and try to lessen it to say it's all about themselves, but they're going to they're have to learn to ground it because they do learn eventually that they can't get the same elsewhere. Now, when they are, um, you know, basically running away and they're scared, it's bringing up all their insecurities and it's making them feel really, really um, down. And they do miss you and they do think about that experience. So for them, it would be very like sexual. They're having dreams about you and thoughts about you, whereas for you, it would be very like romantic. And the reason why your divine masculine weaves or comes in and goes out, comes in and goes out, it's because of that energy, right? Because they cannot ground that energy and neither can you. So every time you do sleep with them, they might run away again because they get triggered, they get insecure, they feel like you're going to control them, you're going to put them on a leash, and they have to change. And so that energy is so much that they have to ground it, and so do you. Number 16 is they know that you are the source of all their power, and them pleasing you has made them into a sex god, because prior to that, they may not have been um, so much uh, as a sex god, but they become more. They might have been before. Um, but not to the extent when they've slept with you, they go to another level, but it's distorted again and it's not sustainable. And they know you're the source of it. So they don't want to give their power away to you because they're very much in their pride and ego. Um, and number 17, if you've had sex with your twin flame, a union will definitely happen in this lifetime. And the reason being is because your souls have merged. That's not to say if you've only just talked to them, you've only seen them in the supermarket or you've never slept with them or you've never dated them, you never kissed them or whatever, whatever, it won't happen. It just maybe happen a bit slower or it'll be happening in the astral world. But if you physically dated your twin flame, slept with your twin flame, you're usually on a fast track, okay? Especially if you've had a Kundalini awakening when you've met them and the tantric stuff and the battery stuff. Because that the heroes gamos and all those things, they do tend to happen, but not everyone gets it straight away if they sleep with them. It might happen later because you might have sexual blocks, you might have... Uh, abuse and pain and all sorts of other things getting in the way because some twin flames I know their sexual experience uh, wasn't great the first couple of times okay um so what we can do about it is to help the divine masculine because they are more stuck in the lower chakras is to bring them to the heart space right so if you if you make your twin flame the heart chakra opened but then it closes so you're gonna have to keep basically pulling the energy mentally from the root chakra up to the crown and that's how you're gonna assist them to come up up up, up. Now I did start straight away with the, 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 the live, so I'm just going to like recap quickly the beginning part. So we are talking about why the Divine Masculine thinks he's a sex god, so you can ask questions about that. We've been looking at their narcissistic, porn star, prostitute type of behavior. We've understood that they already see the world in the lower chakras like most of humanity. So a world is about sex, food, and, and, you know, just survival, basically, until they learn to come into the heart space. So they are operating from a different um, mode of thinking, okay? They're a different template to you. They are thinking like most of the sleepy peepee, sleepy peepee people in the world. Sleepy people in the world, okay? That's how they are, the sleepy, sleeping beauties of the world as they come to you and they get awakened. Um, and then you get more awakened because you're, you're pretty awake anyway. And obviously you both share the same divine blueprint, so you know how to please each other. You're the perfect partners for each other. 
and you are the sexiest thing to them alive. And with them, sex for the divine feminine is very spiritual, whereas for the divine masculine it's very physical. They feel like a sex god. It is the tantric battery effect. It brings huge packets of energy and all the darkness has to come out of them. All the shame, blame and everything. And they're like a bucking bronco getting it out. They feel like a sex god after they have sex with you. Um, they know they're at mercy of you, so they don't want to, they run. And they cannot sustain the energy by themselves, even if they try with other people, never. And they do go and cock the walk or peacock themselves after they've been with you because they feel so puffed up, puffed up and amazing. Um, and they get charged and that charge has to come out. And they think that, oh, why should I go back to her? Because it's going to be too challenging and it's too scary. And I just go out and sleep with the whole of the world until they get their fingers burnt. Okay. Um, so yeah, they do practice more of the left-handed Tantra unconsciously. They have the Heros Gamos, as do you. And um, all their insecurities come up, basically. And they become a wide portal. And that un energy is unleashed. It's powerful, you know. And those who have had sex with them, they know it baptizes you. It clears away all the shame and guilt. And they have to learn not to be scared. So they can ground it with you. They know you're the source of the power. Then pleasing you. That's giving them that energy. Um, and if you've had sex with them, you will have union um, and just keep bringing the Kundalini energy up, up, up. So that was just a recap of what I've just gone through. So if you have any questions, I shall answer. Um, but otherwise, hopefully that makes sense. But don't worry. It's all part of the damn journey. It's annoying, I know. But you keep bringing that energy up, 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 up to the heart space. And eventually, um, all the, the distortion is emptied. Okay. Because I know some of you say, oh, he's so sexual, I don't like it. Well, then there you go. That's why it is, okay? They are operating from a different headspace, okay? They will never be that spiritual, really. Um, it would be you, but they will come to the heart space, okay? You'll baptize them through sleeping with them, most likely. Okay. I don't know if there's any questions. Listen, this guy is always on point. Thank you. Um, the karmic is the shit on my shoe. <laughs> All the dirty boy things. Yes, exactly. Zeep me is on it today. Yes. Okay. So I don't think there's any questions. I think everyone's been dumbfounded. Okay. Can the divine... Okay, one question. Okay, good. Can the divine feminine call back all the sexual energy back given to the divine masculine to herself? Good question. Now, you ha if the sexual energy is joint, it's both of yours energies, okay? So oftentimes the divine feminine is like, he's distorted and he needs to heal. It's not only mirroring whatever's in you. There's so much unconscious stuff that's shoved in your subconscious mind that needs to be, you know, integrated. So always bring your energy back. Always love yourself. Because I hear some people giving out love to their divine masculine. No, it's chasing. It pushes them away. Always give yourself that energy. Nourish yourself and call that energy back. So, yes, that's fine. And there's no issue with that. Does anyone have any other questions about uh, Hi, Barbara? Barbara? Uh, about what's going on because I have you can watch the live obviously again but the energies have been quite intense and prior today's the equinox and we've had the eclipse the eclipse was bringing a lot of back pains bringing a lot of anger a lot of blame a lot of I don't want him back and all that kind of stuff but now with the equinox it's a lot of heart opening and a lot of love okay and forgiveness so hopefully from what I have explained it uh, you can understand how it all works um Thank you. Yeah, from TikTok. So if there's no other questions, I think we're going to end um, the live. But uh, do watch it over again, because there's a lot of information I've explained, which is interesting. So um, right now I am doing a couple of episodes on Tantra. And that explains furthermore why it relates to Twin Flames. But then after that, uh, we're going into Inner Child and different modalities of doing shadow work and chakra healing. And then uh, we're talking about shamanism and plant medicine. And I am flying out in the next few days. I will be flying out to South and Central America for a couple of months. So there might be times when I'm not posting because I'll be in retreats uh, in the jungle, basically. So there we go. Okay. It is recorded and it will be posted. Um, how does being celibate um, affect the dynamic? Okay. It's very interesting. Good. Okay. So in Twin Flames, right, it's not about suppressing anything. It's about expressing it and becoming balanced, okay? Because if you suppress your sexual energy, you will notice your divine masculine has to balance that out for you. It's like a seesaw. So if you don't even self-pleasure, uh, not because you, it naturally comes to you, but because you're forcing it, 
you will see them do more sexual stuff because you operate as one sort of circuit, one sort of um, unit, okay? So if one is um, uh, abstaining or withholding their sexual energy, the other one will do it more unless you've integrated it and balanced it. If you come to a natural place of celibacy, that's fine. So celibacy, there's different levels, right? Celibacy can be like no self-pleasure at all, or celibacy could be that you're not seeing other people, but you are self-pleasuring. So always be mindful that you're not suppressing your energy and you're, um, you're expressing it in a healthy, divine way, and you're becoming balanced with it. Because otherwise you'll notice divine masculine will have to compensate. You know, if you become a nun, even though you don't want to, they'll become a slut <laughs> to balance it out because you can't do extremes. It's about coming to zero point and balancing, unfortunately. I haven't experienced Kundalini awakening, but darker at the soul, although we have been intimate. Yes. So some people don't get Kundalini straight away. I mean, I had Kundalini within five seconds of me, my twin flame, because we got intimate straight away a couple of times. Um, and it was like an atomic bomb, like in the, in the apartment, it was nighttime and it was like light, it was crazy. So I understand why they get scared and run because they feel like we've done some magic on them. But to all the divine masculines watching, we haven't done any dark magic on you. We ain't some sex magic goddesses. And we didn't even know what was happening either. But we understood it because we are more connected with the divine and we got all the information, whereas you did not and you ran. Okay. All right. Health issues. It's recorded. Yes. Um, I feel my DM more and more in my field. I feel his love means we are coming together, I feel, more faith. Yes, well, they will always visit you. Their 5D self is so nice, right? Their 3D self is such a dickhead, but their 5D self is so nice, um, generally, until they've healed. Um, but yes, you will feel more soul merge coming up. How do you balance it out? You balance it out by self-love, bringing the energy back to yourself, getting to a place of peace, not getting triggered anymore. So therefore you've let out all of your um, shadows, you've let out all of your darkness by expressing it or integrating it or balancing it. It's basically not being triggered by what they do anymore and kind of understanding it more so on a deeper level. You will get to a place of balance, you get to a place of neutrality and you'll feel fine. And you'll also, be, you'll also understand that they're doing what they're doing because that's how this mechanism is created for Twin Flames and they're having to get rid of all the, their darkness. The way it is, is that you are highly evolved, spiritual, okay? It, both of you are, but in the 3D, you are presenting that. And they are not. They're like the walking dead, the sleeping dead, okay? They are stuck in the lower chakras. It's all about sex, food, and, you know, whatever, survival. Like most of humanity. And they meet you, and they have this amazing experience, explosive, but they're scared of it. So it's taking them a while to catch up takes them a while for them to catch up and they have to let go of all the crap and they do speed they're going they're on a speed track how do you know if i'm not distorted feminine anymore that's a very good one so distorted feminines are toxic controlling mm -hmm. egotistical um bitchy you know anxious um, jealous insecure all that kind of stuff swearing bad mouthing but when you are a divine feminine you are totally connected with god you trust you allow you are surrendered, you have boundaries, you're, you know, you're like an Amazonian goddess, you are a powerful being, but you're not affected by others, and you're okay. How do you forgive people who mirror me this and treat me like shit? Okay, so the forgiveness, it, if you think about karma, everyone gets what they do to another, right? So God will sort that out, and that's for God to decide. We are not here as prison gods or people to give um, out um, sort of like um, sentences. So when we hold on to um, resentment, it hurts us and it affects us. And I don't know, before the last few days, I had so much stuff going on in my mind. And I was like, I don't want to feel this way. It doesn't feel good. I just want to leave that out, you know, stay in the present and not focus on the past and focus on the now. And understand as well, the person who does stuff to you, they suffer. But also what invited that? How did we manifest or create that into our field? Were we treating ourselves bad? Were we not having enough strong boundaries and self-love and that can be used to be able to understand where you are inviting that sort of energy okay we don't do any magic we are magic oh yes 3d is the worst is it okay to send a small message if you feel the urge to contact yes of course so um not from like a place of insecurity a place of anxiety but if you place from a place of love and you feel inspired and you have to send that message do it do it do it do it yes that's fine they might not reply so it's fine like a mirror no, don't send. When in a mental state is low, just be calm and meditate and feel what you want and do it. 
you know, we, we, it's very important for us to not tell people what to do um, and just guide. If, decide for yourself, okay? You can't fuck up the journey and what you have to do, you have to do. You have to get the chase out of your system. You have to get the distortion out of your system. Just like they have to get the sex out of their system or whatever they're doing, you have to get it out of your system. Otherwise, you suppress it. It will just bounce out, okay? Like jack in the box. So if you feel aligned and you feel good or you feel this like sometimes god will use you as a thunderbolt and sometimes you will send a message or say something and you cannot control you cannot control because the divine has taken over you and i've done this a few times where you've had to say the thing or do the thing and it triggers the divine masculine the hell out they needed it they needed it they needed it they needed it so if the divine feminine doesn't uh, feel like sharing her body with anyone but channels her sexual energy for creative healing and pressure can we say it's balanced yes so basically, if you feel content and you feel happy with not sharing your body and you feel divine putting it into your creative stuff, then it's fine. And if you feel like you want a self-pleasure, that's fine. And if you feel like someone comes into your life and you want to explore and date with them, that's fine. Do things from a place of self-love, from a place of divinity, not from a place of scarcity, lack or desperation. When you come from a place of love, everything you do is aligned. Okay. Meditation is the only solution for everything. Sexual energy is all about spiritual process. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if meditation is the only solution for everything. Everything has its own technique, and everyone has their own thing they enjoy. The divine masculine may never meditate. Okay, they might do, but they might go for a run, or they might do weight training, or they might do hard labor, or they might earn a lot of money, or do other things that will help to align them. You know, obviously having sex with each other heals you straight away as well. So there are many different ways. And some divine feminines don't like meditating. And you might prefer to, I don't know, do yoga or um, write things or do other journal or whatever it is. So use what works for you and listen to your own intuition. We've got to get to a point where we're not going outside for answers, but we're understanding them from within. I got to know my twin flame is all about spiritual and kundalini energy between us. Yes. Well, for them, it's very sexual. We are in separation. A soulmate just entered my life. Any idea why? So oftentimes it's a test. It can also be to help you. You might have come to a certain level of self-love and therefore a soulmate is added to your life. Now, if you, you know, are not in a place of desperation and you want to explore, there's nothing wrong with it. It might help you and it might help your journey. It might accelerate you. So that's fine. We don't judge. Um, yes, just sending from a place of love sometimes have too much love for the DM because they are good humans. Okay, um, Seigal, um, just make sure that you are not putting out chasing energy and you are not sending out too much love. Now, if your divine masculine is a very good human being, he's probably a high level soulmate, because usually the twin flame divine masculine is a total asshole until he's healed. Okay, uh, Mare Hophoic, I have confronted my divine masculine that whenever he's horny, then he only messages. Does he feel the same for everyone? No, he does not feel the same for everyone, but with you, he feels it more, okay? So um, initially, they don't understand. They think it's just sexual with us. They don't think it's emotional or there's more of a connect. They just think it's a wild sex ride. We're a wild sexual person that unleashes them. So they don't get it. And um, they will communicate with you in a very sexual way. They'll say, send me pictures, send me videos. And it's up to you whether you'll send it. If, if you don't feel like, if it makes you feel like a prostitute, then don't. But they have to be um, boundaries put in place and you have to kind of almost reprimand them to, and they won't like it and they might run and then come back. But bringing them up slowly to the heart space. But understand that their way of expressing love is sexual at first until they come to the heart space. So when they're saying the most filthiest things to you, it is because they actually want more, but they don't know how to express it. They may speak to other people like that, but not in the same way and not with the same feelings. So um, it is you as a divine feminine, just make them wild and they don't know what to do with that energy. It just drives them crazy. It's the Kundalini energy and it, you feel it in the lower chakras, right? You've got to bring it up to the heart space. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um... How come the divine masculine comes so often, appears in sex vivid dreams? Okay, well, that's used. I'm just, <laughs> I don't always get that. Um, so basically, it is them connecting with you in whichever way in the non physical, right? They're trying to romance you. I mean, my dreams are more romantic about marriage and kids and stuff like that. It's, I've only ever had, I think, one sexual dream in that sense, which is great. But it is 
their energy, isn't it? And they are connecting with you and loving you, and it's fine. Like, sex is not dirty, it's not bad. Thanks, doing a great job. Okay, uh, anything else? Thank you for this. I pulled back my energy and focused on myself. The DM ended up cheating on me with multiple people. Now I honestly can't look at them in the same way at all. I understand that. Nanastasia, I want you to tell me, you said that they cheated on you. So were you in a committed relationship? Did he say to you, I'm your boyfriend, you're my girlfriend or partner, whatever it is, and we are in a monogamous relationship here on in? I, I don't think he would have said that. Because what they do in separation, unfortunately, and what you do in separation, fortunately, is your business, right? Until they say to you, you are my girlfriend, you are my wife or husband or whatever it is, and you, I'm committed to you, I want to be with you, I want to be monogamous, they're a free agent. In their minds, that's how they, they operate, okay? So they saw it as a sexual connection, they feel connection, but they don't understand why, they're scared of you, they've run away, you've attached this emotional aspect to it, this divine aspect to it, you're hurting and in pain about them, they're hurting and in pain about their own selves, they are, in their minds, they're a free agent. They don't owe you nothing. Now, what they don't realize is that one day they'll have to come back to you because they're going to be pulled back in. Then what are you going to say? Yes, okay, in separation, you can do whatever the fuck you want, but there are repercussions when you return, right? And if the divine feminine's in her distortion, she will block or she will say nasty things or go off with someone else, and then the running and chasing continues. And if the divine masculine is immature and childish, he will do far worse. He can go out and sleep with more people or date other people and you both get burnt. But if he is quite mature, he'll understand and he'll say, you know what, I was a total asshole and I need to wait for her while she gets it out of her system, her anger. So it just depends like that, okay? Right. Uh, my DM lives in the house opposite to mine with his parents and wife. What you gotta say about that? Or what do you want me to say about that, you know? He's married, he's, he's there, but are you doing your inner work? That's what I want to say. What, what are you doing to be able to help the situation? How are you healing so that you heal separation? Because everything is your own manifestation and third parties that are created in Twin Flame Dynamics is because the, both of you actually, but DF definitely is, has a lot of insecurities because you don't feel good enough. So you create a third party to fill the gap where you should be. Um, Samja has lots of questions. Good, it's alright to have questions. As a DF, is it unusual for not one not to remember dreams? You'll remember the dreams that you're meant to remember. You will, if, especially if they're meant to be remembered. And if you have a really big dream that you remember all day long, the Divine Masculine would have had the same dream, or similar. It would have been a similar theme or lesson, but maybe play that in a different way. Mine reached out the day before the 8-8 portal and apologised for not reaching out, and called himself a coward and disappear again. Oh, that's nice. At least he did apologize, you know. Um, why did he disappear? Did What did you say to him? Did, once he apologized, were you like cool, relaxed, grounded, or were you like, you know, suffocating him with your energy, either of anger or love? Like, well, why did he run? Um, dream watchers, what? Would you tell us more about how the divine masculine comes back? Mine is texting from time to time. I was never chasing, but was available. And now I'm not engaging in texting when he does. They come back in different ways, okay? Usually they come back very sexually, but they can also come back with an apology if they're more evolved. It depends where your energy's at and depends where their energy's at and how grounded. They're gonna always wanna test you. They're always, that's what their job is. Their tool is to test you, to see how grounded and balanced you are. They're like your greatest teacher, right? So they will come back in different ways. Um, they're not going to always come back with a straight, I want to marry you or be in a relationship with you. It's usually they're going to test the waters. They'll come in, they'll see how the energy is, and they'll go out. Now with the tantric battery thing that I told you when you have sex, the divine masculine understands if the energy is too cataclysmic, right? They know that the circuit can be broken so you know, for many years. So that's why sometimes unconsciously they separate from you because they realize that um, the threshold has been reached. So they're kind of unconsciously, like almost like a puppet, understanding, not understanding mentally, but unconsciously they know how to go about this. They get pushed and pulled and they feel, okay, to understand what's best for you. They're working in tandem and they're working for you. Uh, somehow you don't realize this, but they are. How can one find purpose? Been praying meditation for years for it. Thank you for your assistance. It shouldn't take that long to find your purpose. Um, do what makes you feel joyful. 
and then keep doing it until you can no longer and then do something else that feels joyful eventually you will follow your joy with the crumbs to get to your purpose Okay, Nanasasya said, we were committed. I had to move because he was being abusive, but both of us made it clear that we are still together. Okay, so then definitely he has cheated on you. Um, first of all, uh, confirm that he is your twin flame, especially if he's being abusive and aggressive. Some of them I've heard can be. I've not met. Mine was not like that. Um, I, haven't I don't confirm whether people are twin flames, so I'm not sure, right? But generally, I don't know if that is the case that they would do that, but... I don't know. I do have a friend whose twin flame acts very abusive towards her, but I don't know if that's confirmed either. So there's going to be some sort of lesson. The way I see it is this. Your soul, as twin flames, your one soul in two bodies, right, has called this experience for some reason or the other. So let's stop seeing them as a separate and he and me. It's like I am triggering me. I am triggering I to ascend and to improve. So essentially your soul decided that it wanted to teach you a lesson or teach him a lesson through this experience so i would connect deeper into that and surrender with god and work on forgiving yourself forgiving him and loving all aspects and he will have to make it up to you and there have to be boundaries because abuse we don't accept we don't accept abuse too good for that somewhere within yourself and your psyche you are accepting abuse did you accept abuse as a child did you experience father who was physically, emotionally, mentally abusive? Because often DM, if not always, mirrors those relationships, men, male relationships. Where are the issues happening in your life? Heal those. Okay, maybe book a session. Is the reason the DM and I are not together due to not knowing my purpose? No, it's due to the energy that's very, very intense that you need to ground. That's all. You know, your purpose can be as simple as just um, being there for your children or your parents or, um, I don't know, doing your daily job where you are bringing love and light. You know, you could be working as a cleaner, but be singing and being joyful. That's your purpose also. Um, uh, I hear you. All I can do is focus on myself. Yes, I'm sorry that he did that to you, though. Pooja Ratan, how do you ask the universe to face everything else you need to heal? How to ask the universe to face everything else you need to heal? It will come to you. You don't need to face everything all at once. Why would you want to do that for? Lessons will come as and when. Okay, me and my twin flame are talking in telepathy. Very good. I'm going to finish off in a few minutes. So I'm just going to read the last few. So no more questions, please. Um, no, very relaxed energy. I don't reach out. I accept it and told him it's great to hear from him with lots of love. That's it. Perfect. Does the DM desire... FM when he is with other women. You mean, does the DM desire the divine feminine when he's with other women? Yes. Unconsciously, when you or them sleep with other people, you are actually um, desiring one another. But the actuality is you're desiring oneness with source. So when you do have sex with your twin, it is a feeling of you understand the whole meaning of life. You're connected with God. You feel oneness. You feel peace. They feel peace too. They feel innocence and peace, but it's more sexual. For us, it's more spiritual. So you're actually, the desire is for union with God. The desire is for inner union with God, which you experience with your twin. So every experience you've had until now in your life sexually and them has always been that divine desire to be in union with God. So when they're sleeping with other women or other people, they are actually desiring that union, that connection, which is actually with you, but they don't always consciously know that. So unconsciously, yes, they are feeling you. It depends on how awake they are. Some of them are consciously feeling you, okay? But you're too scary for them, so they try it out with others. You're the truth, okay? Benos to them, the DMs are master energy readers and they respond to the energies in a physical way in the 3D, exactly. Barbarelli, exactly. They know about your energy. They know when it's too much, they have to go. They know when you're distorted. They know when you're going to fight with them <laughs> and, and chop them off. <laughs> yeah, okay. What are your thoughts on past life regression? Um, yeah, it's great. I, I can do that as well with timeline therapy and um, there's other people who do that. I've had it done to myself. It's amazing. I've met Jehovah. I didn't know who that was, um, which is another name for God. So yeah, I think it's great. When do twin flames unite in the 3D? They unite when you've done your work, okay? So you get to a point where you've grounded the energy so much, it's not so big, and it's like a threshold. I think it's a threshold, a certain point where you've done enough work because you don't have to clear everything you don't have to be a perfect um you know divine ascended master but you have to do enough 
to have gone past the point where they can come back in with their energy, where the magnets are no longer repelling. Because if it repels, then it can actually cause a lot of problems. What is the best way to heal the sacral chakra? I believe, for me, is giving love to that part of the, the, your body, but you can also put on some sacral chakra cleansing music on YouTube. By the way, you are amazing. Thanks a million for your help. All right, wonderful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Much love and healing for all. And that's a good way to end now, okay? So understand, listen to this again, um, maybe it will help you, I think. But understand it's all part of the journey and it's all just for your benefit and for you to uh, ascend. Um, you don't wait for the DM, you just work on yourself so you feel the best and they have to catch up. You're not waiting, they're catching up. And just keep working on yourself and loving yourself and be in your power. Because at the end of the day, the divine masculine may think that he is a sex god, but in actual fact, you are the sex goddess and they worship you. Take care.